We are flying back to France today. And shoes! We're gonna have to wear shoes! So the police came because we were very suspicious. We've got a different captain today. So in the meantime, we have no power on board. Oopsie. We have individual cells now, rather than the entire battery, and we will connect and package them ourselves. This is what we have now. So we are building four 200 amp hours battery banks using EVE battery cells. We need to go shopping. Yeah. How do we do that? We managed to go to one of the scooters. We are up early today because we are surprising our families and friends in France. We are flying back to France today. I mean, we're starting today. <laughs> but we are arriving in two days. We've kept that a uh, surprise even to your mom and brother. So when they said goodbye, they thought they were saying goodbye for at least a year. But turns mm. out we are not. We are leaving now and we managed to not tell anyone in our families. So it's a big surprise and we are very happy because we haven't been home for two years. We are flying today. We are leaving the boat here in uh, Elena Marina. I'm slightly worried about the humidity because it's very humid so we'll see when we get back. We're leaving for a month and a half. Bags are packed. It is paradise here but sometimes it feels like you want to be home, you want to be with your family for a little bit so it is the time. Wow, what is all this mess? What's happening here? So, the good news is that we are flying back to France. So yeah, we're gonna see our families and everything. So quite excited about this. The bad news is packing because I'm packing winter stuff. I don't like that. I was just saying to you two minutes ago how I can't picture you not wearing shorts. <laughs> like you're gonna have to wear long pants and I can't picture that. Got that. Pants. And shoes! We're gonna have to wear shoes! Ah. But I'm still excited to see our families, so... We arrived in Tempagaram yesterday and dropped our guests at the airport this morning at 6am. That gives us a full day to pack, prep the boat and most importantly, move her to the other marina in Sorong, Elena Marina. Only problem, here in Indonesia, the charts can't be trusted. So we are waiting next to Sorong because we are going into a marina which is down the river. So we have to go through a very, very shallow patch. And to do that, we are waiting for the port captain. He's gonna come around and help us get through the best path. So here's a pilot. I think he's gonna come aboard, tell us where to go, basically. We are two hours ahead of high tide. We should have plenty of water, but he said some points are very, very shallow. So um, even though we draft only 0.8, I'll trust a local a hundred times. <laughs> that's fine. They know their water, so um, that's fine. So we had a meeting point here at 2 p.m which is now so yeah waiting for him to arrive and help us get around so we waited here quite a while actually because one thing is for sure punctuality in the tropical island isn't a concept and of course we are waiting here with the airport here the one day of the year where the president is supposed to land in Sorong so the police came because we were very suspicious no problem as soon as we explain but they refused to be filmed finally our guide arrived I have a new friend helping me <laughs> the captain well we are going straight into the river probably into the mangrove uh, it's quite nerve-wracking because we only have about two meters of water under the boat so i hope we don't touch but we've got a different captain today and he knows what he's doing so let's trust him it doesn't look like it but this is the shallow spot just at the entrance of the river and despite what the chart looks like it's actually only the very beginning that is shallow as soon as we are getting back to over three meters of water we are in the clear and after that we just need to go deep into the river and prepare the boat for docking <laughs> And just like that, she is docked. It's a bit more tricky here because the pontoon doesn't move up and down with the tide. So at low tide like now, we are below ground level. Three hours later. Where are you going? <laughs> I'm emptying the carburetor. Because we are leaving the boat for six weeks. So we want the carburetor to be empty. But it's been going on forever. <laughs> Come on, that's a five second job. I mean, it feels like this engine is not consuming anything. Are you sure you unplugged the fuel line? Yeah. 
Success. Success. All righty. This one is empty. Need to do a second one need now. Need to do a second one. Out of the water. Raise. For the rest of this long day, we packed, prepped the boat, and made sure there was no food left on board. That's it. We are locking the boat. Let's hope this time is not gonna be two years and a half. Yeah, we've prepped everything. When you think we're only leaving for like six weeks, we probably over prepped everything. But last time we left for three months, ended up being three years. So I don't know, I guess better safe than sorry. Let's hope we see you back in six weeks. First flight, it's across Indonesia, Sorong to Jakarta, in about four hours. So how long do we have to wait? <laughs> A short time, 11 hours something. At least we made it and now we just have to wait for the big flight. I'm super excited just to see their face. I can picture how it's gonna be, can't wait. Well, you're gonna have to wait. I found a bit of a space where to wait, so I think we're gonna spend a couple of hours here at least. So, the surprise. A couple of days ago, it was my birthday, so Jan called my family and actually organized some sort of surprise for me. So they all supposed to go at my parents and have some drinks and stuff and call me to surprise me all together. Obviously, I'm not supposed to know that, but obviously that is not the surprise. They think they are surprising me. It's actually the other way around, which is very funny. They're all gonna be at my parents which is great we're gonna be able to surprise them all together except for one thing so my mom is texting Jan at the moment because apparently my sister and my nephew they have to leave before 3 p.m. but we are only landing at 2 p.m. so by the time we collect our luggage and find a taxi and everything I don't know if we're gonna be able to make it before 3 p.m. trying to find a solution here unfortunately that means that we're probably gonna have to contact somebody in the family and uh, ruin the surprise for one person so they can do damage control on the other side. Oh yeah, trying to decide what we do. We finally made it to Toulouse. It's a bit stressful because we're trying to be at my parents as quickly as possible to surprise them because they are all reunited there. So Jan's waiting for the luggage while I try to find the taxis. A final 20 minutes ride to my parents and we are ready to surprise them. They just called us and we replied without the video so they are calling back to see us. days later, it was time to surprise Jan's parents. Unfortunately, we don't have the recording of the surprise that is dad because it was night time, but it was equally as good. For his mom, we just called her and got her to get back to her place on some bogus delivery excuse, which she didn't even question. <laughs> And just like that, we had a fabulous Christmas break. We saw families, friends, and barely had any time left over, but we wouldn't have it any other way. Fast forward to a return in Indonesia in January. We are back on board, yay! And before we have time to actually rest, what do we have to do? We swap the batteries. Great. Fun job. Great. We are very tired, we've been up since three in the morning. <laughs> Me great. three, me four. And we have an entire day with an electrician coming on board to swap the batteries. Unfortunately, because our batteries, lithium batteries, are a bit old, usually they last seven to ten years, but I think we've been on the unlucky side and it's been seven years. The batteries barely go through the night. They lost their efficiency, so they still charge up to 100% and they just discharge a lot quicker than what they used to. And they are starting to be a bit swollen as well, which is a sign that they're about to die. They go up to 100%, but the issue is they drop very quickly and the zero is not zero <laughs> because last time we were at like 55%, but the voltage was below 12 volts. It was like 11.8 
and yeah everything shut down because that's how it's designed to work so um just the fact that they are swollen means that we probably need to change them we managed to find an electrician here in indonesia and which is not easy yeah and he's actually really good he's helped us before while we were back in france over christmas we ordered some new lithium batteries which have arrived and today is the big day we are swapping everything he's just we've been up since three and four in the morning and he's gonna be here all day it's gonna be a long day ahead of us your old uh, system without bms first yeah only until for one day you know? yeah you will just have to make sure that you don't go like about 14 and below 12 volts you have a volt meter yeah yeah, yeah. Um. First job consists in removing the current batteries and fully measure the space we have. First step is done. We removed all the batteries, but that means um, we have no power. <laughs> it's empty. So yeah, I think now the goal is to put the new ones in. But first we need to rearrange all the cables and to have everything ready. So in the meantime, we have no power on board. Oopsie. Second step is cable management, because yes, the amount of cable in here is a mess. And yet, not much we can do here, because the real job will be to identify each single cable, ensure it's still used, and label it. Are we doing it? No way, Jose. As soon as that bench is closed, I will forget about that mess. <laughs> And now, the new batteries are coming in. Not exactly the packaging you expected, right? Yes, we have individual cells now, rather than the entire battery, and we will connect and package them ourselves. I mean we, our electrician. We are adding 800 amp hours, which is a step up from our previous 480. We are putting them in without worrying about the packaging first, so that we can have power through the night. And we will finish the job tomorrow. And even with this approach, we are literally finishing way after dark. Good morning everyone. So last night was a late one. We managed to get the battery in so we had uh, power for the night. Let me show you what we did. This is what we have now. Beautiful, isn't it? So all the BMS are installed. They're all working fine. So now what we have to do is create boxes for all the cells so it doesn't move around, so they are more protected. Yeah, and then we have to we do a few of the terminals and stuff, but the big stuff is here because we have power, but we have a mess also on the boat. No, I don't know what you're talking about. No? No. Yeah. It's fine. So now it's time to tell you a bit more about those batteries. So we are building four 200 amp hours battery banks using EVE battery cells. Each cell has a capacity of 100 amp hours at 3 volt, so that means that it can provide 100 amps for one hour at 3 volt. And what we want is 200 amp hours per bank. So we are connecting two cells in parallel, and then our boat system is in 12 volt, so we need four pairs of two in series. So we end up with one battery bank in 12 volt, 200 amp hours, composed of a total of eight cells. And this is what we call 2P4S, so two parallel, four in series. If we wanted to go in 24 volts, we would have to do 2P8S. The connections between the cells, they're made with the copper bus bars. So we do this four times to create four batteries for a total of 800 amp hours. Now let's talk about the assembly, but before we do that, and we give you the idea that this is an easy project that you can do yourself, I just want to add a word of caution. So we got a certified electrician to do that for us, because there's just so much that can go wrong, like lithium batteries, they can catch fire, they can explode, they can leak and release toxic chemicals, etc, etc. So just be mindful, it will be a dangerous project. Before assembling, our electrician made sure that all the cells were balanced, so at the same voltage. If not, uh, the cells would have needed to be charged individually to reach the same state of charge. Then the cells are connected as follow, and we are placing an additional plastic insulation sheet in between each of them. Now let's talk about the BMS. So 
So BMS is a battery management system, which is plugged to the battery bank to prevent overcharging and overdraining. It also measures the temperature, the voltage and the current on each individual cell to balance them and protect them. Ours have a Bluetooth connectivity as well, so we can get real-time info on our batteries, which is really, really nice. I'm not going to get into the details of how to connect the BMS because each one has a very specific diagram to follow to know which specific wire goes to which cell positive. Just follow the diagram and ensure the wires are disconnected from the BMS while you are plugging them to the cells. After that, we need to make sure that the batteries packs are correctly packaged so nothing moves. In our case, we just build a frame to maintain each pack together and we use wood blocks in the battery compartment to make sure that nothing will move. If the batteries can move or the cell can move, they could get damaged in a shock, for example, and start leaking. So that's really important as well. Last step, the packaging. Rock is adding cable wrap to control the mess because that's a lot of cables and wires. Then adding an extra plastic insulation sheet on the top, more to protect from dust than anything else. The final action is to add foam where there is space to pack everything firmly and voila we have new batteries. So what's the plan? We need to go shopping. Yeah. How do we do that? We managed to go to one of the scooter. Helen. Indonesia Helen. Yeah. Helen? Yeah Helen. 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 Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. On the road with a modified, hanging around between the mountains, coast to coast, you know how to drive. Dragon flies around the sunset, can you believe we're together? We're celebrating September. What do you mean it's forever? All right, supermarket run, and we are getting lots of everything. Let's start now. I'll spare you the details of the shopping. If you are interested, we have a dedicated video. Link is here. Instead, here's a fun video of the second time we took the scooter into Sarong. Hey, hey. Scooters are nice, but when it rains, we are screwed. If you've enjoyed this episode make sure to subscribe and drop us a like don't miss the next one as we are finally getting back into raja ampat see you next time bye